yes. I am the pinnacle of online entertainment. Oh boy, New Blood released some of them demos, some of them new games I can play. Man, I don't mean to keep pimping out these New Blood titles, and once they release a bad game, I will be there to nuke that thing from orbit. But that's not today, because Ultra Kill and Gloomwood, Ultra Wood, release an Ultra Wood bundle, you cowards. Dave Oshry's checks always bounce because he spends all the New Blood money on meme domains. It, why not? So Ultra Kill is a game I've actually been playing since before New Blood was involved. It was one of those games that showed up in my inbox, which is like. 50% upcoming shooter games and 50% sponsorship offers, and 25% of those sponsorship offers are from the same place, and they've been asking for months, look guys, I don't want to do sponsorships. If I'm going to ramble like an idiot for the first 30 seconds of a video, it's going to be on my terms. This episode is brought to you by Nutrafuel, the drink by incarcerated gamers for incarcerated gamers. Sometimes you need an extra kick in the ass to win at video games, especially if you're not some Gen Z Fortnite hair color memes TikTok distance learning. So we got a double wide can of Nutrafuel, now with Dark meat. You're gonna need it for Ultra Kill. Mankind is dead. Blood is fuel. Hell is full. That's all you need to know. Ultra Kill is fucking brutal. Like, when you call a game Ultra Kill, you better fucking deliver. Knock, knock, open up the doors. Oh look, it's a game with old crispy graphics and guns. But the old crispy graphics are like PS1 graphics, complete with the warpy textures, yes. This was intentional, and you can turn it off if you don't like it. Oh, and if you want to turn the settings all the way down... I made it through an entire stage like this. Shoot things with guns, get close to them. The blood of the damned heals you. There's no health pickups except the secret ones that put you at 200. That overcharge doesn't last long. I think the weakest enemy in this game takes a quarter of your health away, and the smallest number of those I've seen spawn at once is three. Just blood, blood, blood. I know what you're thinking. Is this whole game inside of a bunch of brown industrial corridors? No, thank God, it's not Quake 2 for the PS1. This isn't bad, but the first chapter is kind of bland in terms of the visuals, which is a thing that changes completely by the next chapter. I have played a little bit more of this game than what's in the demo, and in chapter two, you get to see this, which is beautiful. This game isn't exactly retro FPS, it's kind of like hypercharged arenas. It goes fast, the player can dash, slide, air dash, wall jump, ground pound, and you're gonna need every ability you can get, mostly for the bosses, which are everywhere. There's a mid-level enemy that appears as a boss in the first stage, the malicious face. Don't think the enemies are unfair in this game, at least on normal mode. Violent mode is another story, but that's for real gamers, not YouTube hacks. Oh, Jesus Christ, what is this now? Anyway, Malicious Face, hitting him with one of the alt fires on the pistol. There are two in this demo on the upgrade screen at the beginning of stages makes me think there could be more in the future. The piercing shot does a ton of damage and against weaker enemies it fills the screen with blood, but everything moves so fast that you don't get disoriented from the particle effects. That's not the cool one, though. The cool one I'm gonna demonstrate on this glitched out enemy. That is an instant critical hit by ricocheting off a coin. Is there a shotgun? Of course there is! You start with a double barrel that has a secondary grenade launcher. Weirdly, not my favorite shotgun mode in the game because you get a pump action version that lets you charge the shot.
There's no ammo in this game, you just never stop firing. So you charge the shot with the secondary fire button. If you hit it enough times, it'll flash red and blow up in your face. Which may not be instant death if you blow up some stuff around you. And then you get the nail gun, which isn't at all what you'd expect. If you see this display over here, it's getting hotter, and you have an overheat attack, which would make you think that the gun overheats, but nah, no, fuck that noise. And the other attack, which sticks a tracker that leads the bullets to the target from wherever you are, it's cool, right? But I didn't mention this other thing about the shotgun, which should tell you everything you need to know about the weapons and the tone of this game. Your right hand is weapons, or left, or center, if you choose that, but hey, wait, what? What? I'm getting distracted. The right hand is gun, the left hand is hand. This is one of those games with a lot of fine details. And one of those is what you can do with both of these things. You can punch the shotgun pellets, you can punch the shotgun pellets from your shotgun and make them faster and explode. That's ultra kill. That's what they should put on the store page instead of whatever insanely vulgar thing that I come up with and then dare them to put on there. Okay, we need a reference to violence, we need something surprising to happen with the genitals. I mean, the video was called Ultra Wood, so that's easy enough. Uh, okay, blood is fuel for my cock. Uh, I don't like that one, it sounds weird. This game gave me a sweet ten- After taking me out to dinner at a fancy restaurant where it fingered my in the bathroom, but one of those nice bathrooms with an attendant who hands out towels and lube, but it was weird that he was staring at us the whole time. I tipped him good, though. The bosses are frequent and sometimes secret. If you've seen any of the game's footage, you've probably seen Swords Machine. He acts as a barrier of entry to the game if he can't use the movement right. When you're fighting a boss, or any enemy for that matter, make sure to notice this. Because that means they're about to attack you, and don't let them do that. Anything that shows up as a boss in Prelude shows up as a common enemy in Chapter 1, except Swords Machine. You know, when I'm doing a video, I try and show off stuff that isn't too fast and won't give people motion sickness. Uh, forget it with this one. You'll notice here how the setting is completely changed, and it isn't totally brown anymore. After Prelude, it gets, uh, not that. Hey, it's demo, it's not even early access, you can get this for nothing, go do it. I'm not supposed to say this, but there's two secret levels. TWO secret levels in the demo. One in Prelude and one in the newest chapter. The one in Prelude, that's easy to get to. And also, a little spooky. At the end of these secret levels, you get some of that deep ultra lore, which isn't very deep yet because it's only a demo. Let's do a complete 180 and talk about this new stealth game, Gloomwood. Thief-inspired, well, just like you could say Dusk is like Blood and Quake, or a Medieval is like Hexen and Heretic, there's too many dissimilarities to ignore, like guns. You get guns. And the atmosphere, while similar, feels more horror-oriented. The combat is nicer than Thief because it's a real option. Gloomwood doesn't expect you to not kill people, or whatever these things are, or whatever these things are. Oh sweet Jesus Christ, what is that? You're just a humble doctor trying to make your way over to Countess Sylvia's mansion, and not even to rob it. And like any doctor, you're bound by the Hippocratic Oath. <laughs> You collect small pieces of gold in this game, but thievery isn't what it's about. Now, it's about not getting murdered by whatever happened to this city. To do that, you're gonna need a sword cane, a revolver, and a shotgun. And they don't even underpower the shotgun. They just don't give you a ton of ammo for it. The guns are basically your panic button. It takes three shots from your revolver to take these guys down, and that'll just draw more of them. And if one of them has a gun, forget it. 
The cane sword is effective in combat because it can block melee attacks. There's four skill levels in Gloomwood at the moment. Crescent is easiest, Half Moon is normal, Full Moon is hard, and Blood Moon is ultra hard. I would suggest hard mode for anyone familiar with this kind of game. It feels like it gives you just enough resources to deal with things. And that's only in this demo, which took me about 45 minutes on the first run through on normal. The hard one, where I went for all the secrets, and there are lots of those, took me about 90 minutes, but only because I'd been wandering around a lot after I'd killed everything. I'm gonna tell you guys one of the secrets. Not a big one, but the one where you get the monocle that lets you zoom in, because it's a little bullshit to hide that. You only have two options for health. This mysterious green vial... ...or cheese. Cheese barely does anything. And if you're low on health, your normal walking speed makes it sound like one of your legs was shattered. It's pretty unnerving. Who do I blame for that sound effect? Now, of course, you should be using stealth. Being quiet, hiding in shadows, the guards here make these awful, otherworldly noises, and I'd really like to know what happened to this town. You know, before I kill everybody in it. The real star of the show is the level itself. It's huge, completely unbroken as far as I can tell. Maybe they hit a loading screen on an elevator somewhere, but I didn't see it. The layout of the streets and buildings you can go into feels organic, minus the odd mask texture they put onto a wall. Fucking roll! The city feels bigger than it currently is, and there's a secret I won't spoil in this video that makes me think it's gonna open up a lot more. It's got great atmosphere, down to the save points using sometimes dissonant and distorted classical music. There's only two of them around in this whole demo, so it ain't like Thief where you get to save scum. Unless you run all the way back to them, which the game outright tells you to do at one point. You can still save scum on the easiest skill with a music box in your inventory. On the easiest skill, you're flush with resources. I was able to shoot everything. No stealth required. It took me about 15 minutes, but it was my fourth playthrough. You're given a general idea of what you're supposed to be doing with this note you find at the start, and other notes scattered throughout the world. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention this one. Shipping Manifest. Timber from the Tithe Wild. Two crates. Blackwater Spine Gators. One barrel. Ash Brew. One barrel. High Cleft Dark Plums. One sack. Redwood Side Table. Who ordered this? It's ugly as sin. B. Burley. Jonathan? <laughs> Fuck you, David. The table is ugly. <laughs> okay, time for the sewer. Yeah, there it is. An extensive sewer section. I didn't find the layout to be confusing at all. They take signposting literally over at New Blood. And I don't feel like I'm running down hallways shooting monsters forever. Oh wait, this is a stealth game. But with the option of- Oh my god, what the fuck is that?! I have just enough shotgun shells to do that, if I don't miss. I expect more difficult situations in the full version. I did find one bug that forced me to load a save. Fun fact, you can throw things into toilets and they come out in the sewer. This may add to the immersion, but I think that's cancelled out by the instant stuffing of dudes into toilets. The immersion is good enough for me to question eating cheese I picked up in the sewer. Yeah, I bet it's got a strong scent. Alright, time to get out. Just get on this conveniently placed elevator. Oh god, why would you do this? I have a couple complaints. The field of view seems weird and off, especially when leaning. And since I was playing it in 16 by 9 I had it set to 100, so I thought maybe put it down to 90, which made it better but still strange, before putting it down to 80 where I almost didn't notice anymore. Hey wait, that switch to get into the monocle secret was also here that whole fucking time?! 
I think the weapons might be a little too lo-fi. I'd go as far as to say that the shotgun is ugly. Like something I would make. Also, while I like the approach of being able to defend yourself in this type of game, the idea of being completely helpless always turned me off of certain horror games. Looking at you, Amnesia. It does impact the horror a bit when I'm able to do this. I admit it's awesome and I felt like a total badass, but I don't think the game was going for that. I will say that walking into this mansion after spending a ton of time swimming in sewage isn't exactly the best way to make a first impression. I don't know exactly how a complete version of Gloomwood will play, or how long it'll take to see it, since this demo has been in works for, uh, ever? I can easily recommend either of these games, unless you're turned off by Ultra Kill's graphics or Gloomwood's tables, I guess. Hey, New Blood, please publish a shitty game so I can stop telling people to play your stuff. It's getting embarrassing. Like, put out one of those Unity asset flips where the guns don't have animations and the voiceovers are micro soft Sam instead of inside at last I am <laughs> welcome oh my god they did it again they did it again to me with the Stefan Waite